I wanted to provide some background to all of the different moving parts that Truffle provides for debugging and decoding. And you've already seen uh, quite a bit of the effort involved in decoding uh, with mapping keys. Um, so to kind of give an overview of it, there's a number of core components involved. And the one that is perhaps most recognizable is this truffle debug command. That's a command line, command line debugger. Uh, you give it a transaction hash and it gives you a REPL where you can type step next, step over, et cetera. But this is powered by a library, truffle debugger, uh, and truffle, the truffle debugger library just takes um, like a Web3 provider and uh, a list of compilations and gives an interface, a JavaScript interface for doing that stepping. And, and so what Truffle Debug does is it just wraps this with a, a REPL interpreter and a bunch of display logic. Uh, but besides that, besides our core debugger functionality, um, we have to decode all this data. And so we have two packages for doing decoding. Uh, firstly, we have Truffle Decoder, which is a new high-level package. It, you give it you know, a contract instance or, or a project, and it will let you see all of the state variables in that same level of detail that Harry showed with mapping keys, like nested mappings, nested structs, arrays, et cetera. Uh, Truffle Decoder gives an interface for getting a lossless representation of those. Now, both of these two packages are powered under the hood by a package called Truffle Codec, which handles all of that core decoding logic itself in a way that requires very few dependencies. Like the only dependencies that Truffle Codec requires are things like BN and, and other data manipulation packages, but it makes no network connections of its own. Uh, it's just this standalone piece that knows how Solidity organizes its storage. Uh, as part of this package, we need a way to, you know, represent these decoded values in this lossless way. And so we have a submodule codec.format, which provides this lossless machine readable representation of both values and types. So you can see if you're dealing with a uint 256 or a uint 128. Um, and then all of this stuff is used in several other places, but most notably it's used in truffle test. Uh, which uh, today decodes events using our decoding functionality. And as of tomorrow, when we do a release, you'll see it will report stack traces. Uh, so that's kind of the, those are the moving parts. Uh, I can now switch over to show you a demo. I'll start with the demo of the debugger, just really to increase awareness since we think it's really quite robust these days. Uh, and so I wanted to show off some features. So I, I, rather than write some complicated Solidity code myself, I decided to find a project. And so I, Tornado Cache has some pretty complicated Solidity code. So I decided to use that as an example. And you'll see, um, I'm going to be debugging, they have a contract, ERC20 Tornado. For those of you that are not familiar, Tornado Cache is a, a privacy mixer, mixes tokens. Um, using Merkle proofs. And Tornado is implemented as a base contract Tornado, and then it has a derived instance for ERC20, and then a separate derived instance for ETH itself. Um, we'll be debugging ERC20 Tornado now because it's a little more interesting. Um, so if we look at contracts Tornado, we're going to be debugging the withdraw function. The withdraw function is defined in Tornado, but we're going to be calling ERC20 Tornado. And, and I'll show you where this starts. What are we going to debug? Well, I, I put this, and this is a, an experimental feature we have in test debugging where you can take any Truffle contract interaction. Uh, before my change, the code looked like this. This is just a truffle test. It does a tornado dot withdraw. And so for this demo, I'm just going to put a debug invocation here. And then we're going to do truffle test dash dash debug. 
And while that's going, I'll just make sure I haven't disconnected. Cool. Um, pardon my computer for being slow. It seems to slow down with screen shares. So this is starting up Truffle Test. Um, it's doing a fresh compilation here to make sure it can get all of the information it needs to actually run the debugger. And this is just the Tornado's tests. This is, they're just running. So their tests print out those two addresses, and then it will proceed with the tests. And you'll see shortly. Oh, that's out of order. OK, well, that's a preview of the next demo. But when we get to the withdraw, you'll see that this will break and get into a debugger instance. Any day. Just a quick question. Hi, uh, Victor here. Um, where you're adding uh, await debug into that code. So this is just adding specifically uh, the debug functionality onto Tornado Cache's already existing Truffle tests. That's correct. Yeah. So Truffle gives you this, uh, it, it's experimental. It doesn't work in all cases, but it, it gives you this global, this debug global, which wraps a Truffle contract interaction. So this is like Tornado is a Truffle contract instance. And this is an existing line of code, and we just wrap it. And Truffle test then hooks into this. It's like, oh, you made a transaction. Here you go. Let's debug it. And if you don't put the debug um, flag on your Truffle test command, it won't run this? It'll give you a warning saying, you use the debug global, but you didn't pass the dash dash debug flag. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and this acts as a pass through. So if you continue the tests after the debugger, you'll still get logs. The test will still run. Um, so anyway, here we're into the uh, debugger now. So why don't I pull up that contract again, ERC Tornado, right? And we're going to go next. And immediately, the debugger knows that we're no longer in the same file, right? Withdraw is not defined by ERC or ERC20 Tornado. It's defined by the base Tornado. Uh, and so we have to recognize the jump from one source file to another. And that's fine. So I'll just hit N to step next. or and we find ourselves in another file. So the Truffle debugger keeps track of all of this by knowing, thanks to Solidity's source maps that they provide, um, and our own logic to figure out you know, what are the base contracts. Because if you look at Tornado, Tornado itself is a derived, a derived contract of a Merkle tree with history and a reentrancy guard. Um, and it works just fine. So let's let's jump to a somewhere deep in this transaction. There's this verifier that is stored. Well, first we're on this tornado contract, and we have to deal with this verifier. So what is that? Well, we don't know what it is. That's fine. Um, let's set a breakpoint. So let's look at the verifier contract, and there's a verify function somewhere in here that takes some input. I don't know any how any of this stuff works. It just looks complicated. Um, so let's debug this. So what line is this? 192. So we'll set a breakpoint for verifier.soul on line 192. And let's just step, let's just continue to that point. Can you move up your window a little? Because the lower half is usually blocked by all the numbers. Yeah. Just... How's this? Thanks. And I think it's a little off the screen too. Cool. So we're in this verify function, but how do we get here? Well, we let's just look at the stack trace. Um, so yeah, we're on verifier line 192, and we came from line 224, and from there we came from 233. Uh, we can look at all of the variables here. So you notice that proof was passed in as a memory struct. So what does that look like? Well, 
has a bunch of fields, and each of the fields have a bunch of fields. Um, you can see that we decode those just fine. If we step to the next line, uh, let's step over so we can get a value for a different memory struct. See what that looks like. Well, it's a different struct. You can see this all decodes with no problem. Uh, so where are we? All right, we're still coming from there. So let's just step up, out. Can I ask an annoying question? Yeah, please. Can I step back? No, you can't. Oh. <laughs> uh, the architecture supports it. It's just never been implemented. OK. Well, supports the loose word. Harry, don't correct me. Um, so yeah, notice now that we are on 224. If we step out again, we're going to be on 233. If we step out again, we're going to get pretty close to the end of this transaction. Right? We're on Tornado Soul 87. And you know, there's more I could show, but in the effort of time, I'll just show one more thing, which is that if you want to see a list of all the variables that are available in scope at a particular point in time, you can just type V, and you can see all these. This includes any decoded mapping keys that we're aware of, and pretty much decodes anything we can figure out. Um, call data variables, well, call data pointers, um, memory variables, et cetera. And all the various globals are provided as well. So uh, that's pretty much it for the debugger portion of this demo. Uh, does anyone have any questions before I move on to show off the core decoding functionality? I have one question. Let's say I have uh, this tornado contract and it's breaking somewhere. Let's say you just you know uh, muddled it in the code and you broke something. Uh, and you call this debugger, how would the debugger show you what is breaking or where it's breaking? Uh, you know, really high level question. Yeah, it, um, so as of last week's release, Truffle Debugger will print in red the stack trace when it gets to the end of the transaction saying, this is why it failed. Um, but you could step through yourself manually to kind of identify the place where it failed. But hopefully the stack traces will assist that. Like what happens now is uh, the stack trace is captured when there's a revert. Uh, and this is all thanks to Harry's recent work. Um, when we hit a revert, we figure out what the stack trace was and we save that for the end so that we can report it. Does that help? And so I've been using Truffle here and there as a development platform for testing. Um, and generally, when something goes wrong, there's times where I feel, oh, something reverted, and then I have to go through and you know manually try and figure it out. I, I'm not very good with debugging. Uh, so mm -hmm. this, this, thing, this is something new, right? This is a new feature. Yeah, yeah. So stack traces are in the debugger itself were released last week. Uh, we're going to be putting this functionality into Truffle test in this week's release. Cool. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. I'm not. I wasn't. Gonna, I was tempted to show off that functionality, but I'll, I'll wait for the release. Um, so as for the decoder, so I have some examples here. I have uh, test decoder.test.js, and this I pretty stripped down. It imports two packages, the decoder and the codec. It grabs the ERC20 tornado, and then it grabs all related artifacts. What do we do? Well, we get the deployed instance, and then we construct a decoder, and we just want to see what all the decoder variables are. Let's see what that looks like. A whole test, and I'll just explicitly say I want decoder.test.js.
And there they all are. Um, note that we know not only what the value of each of these variables is, but what the inherited where which inherited contract they come from, right? Like zeros is not defined in ERC20 tornado. It's defined inside tornado, inside Merkle tree with history. And you can get this information. Uh, and th this is in a human readable format using our result inspector. But let me show you one more example, which is this decoder raw, because uh, this decoded information is represented in a machine readable format. And this is to address kind of a need that we've seen in the community where existing decoders, Solidity data or ABI decoders, they just convert to the native JavaScript types, like in the JavaScript ecosystem, if you use, you know, one of the existing decoders, you'll just get a string literal and you don't know if it's a, if it's supposed to be a bytes array, if it's supposed to be, you know, static length bytes array, a dynamic length bytes array. And so we wanted to make sure that we could capture that information in our decoding so that we can control the presentation and, and you can see what that looks like. So if you look at you know, the token state variable, token is an address. So we know that we say, oh, it's token is of type address and it's not payable. And here's the value. And if you want it as a, you know, as a string, you can get it like that. Um, but we can also look at more complex types like verifier. Verifier is a contract. So how do we represent that? Well, we have a type class contract. And so what is it? Well, it's a known contract at this address. And we even know what the name of the contract is. Uh, and so you can see this information provides this lossless representation so you can have this very clear window into what data is stored by your contract but more this represent this this package truffle codec and truffle decoder they can be used not only to look at state variables just for this demo I did state variables but we also use it to decode events we can use it to decode return values revert strings uh, and inside the debugger we use it to decode values on the stack and memory, storage, et cetera. Uh, we have a question, um, Mick. Oh, please. From, uh, Alex, does the debugger support assembly blocks, e.g. displaying var variables from assembly blocks? I guess even the Tornado code may have it for calling the pairing precompile. Uh, Harry, does the debugger, uh, it, the debugger will step through assembly blocks. Yeah, I'm not talking about variables. Yes, the decoder does not currently support displaying assembly variables. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I guess it's, so I, I noticed that recently, I, did, I wasn't paying attention to this until recently. I noticed recently the uh, format for, um, in the AST for assembly stuff changed. So that, now that might actually be possible with the old format that wouldn't really have been possible. But um, yeah, that's, not, that's something I could look into, yeah. Yeah, and then the next question would be any plans for supporting assembly variables? <laughs> um, like well, um, yeah, it was something I hadn't really thought about before, but uh, yeah, that's uh, totally something I could look into. Yeah, absolutely.